Hey, thanks. Of course, with, in a manner of speaking, keeping our social distancing, happy to welcome uh, Cleveland Fed President Loretta Mester to the show. Uh, President Mester, uh, Fed Chair Jay Powell, as uh, Kelly just said, uh, talk, gave a relatively uh, downbeat assessment of the economy and the outlook, saying it was highly uncertain and with significant downside risks. Is this also your outlook? Do you agree with the chairman on that? So it's certainly unprecedented situation that we find ourselves in. So I think the chair is trying to convey that there's a lot of uncertainty around the outlook. And, and frankly, my view is we're really at early days here. It's hard to assess things. I think a reasonable um, outlook at this point is that we could see as the economy starts to reopen and activity picks up um, some improvement over the second half of the year. But at the end of the year, still we're going to have output below the level it was um, at the end of last year. And we may see the unemployment rate come down, but it's still going to be in the double digits or maybe high single digits. So I agree that that's a reasonable outlook, but a number of things would have to fall into place for that to happen. And an equally, um, almost equally probabilistic outcome is much more dire than that. So right now we're in this situation where we really want to make sure that we're doing all we can, um, certainly at the Fed with our tools, Right to make sure that the economy is in a, as best a position it can possibly be in when the recovery starts and we see a, an increase in activity. I think it's early days now. I think we're going to need more yeah. Um, yeah. support from the fiscal side of things um, because this shutdown period has gone on longer than I think anyone anticipated in the beginning, and there's just a lot of pain out there. Let's leave the side the fiscal side of things, which I, I understand what you're saying, and I understand what the Fed chair said about that. What about the Fed? Is the Fed doing all it can right now to bring about the best possible outcome uh, that you can predict from this? So we're doing a lot with the tools that we have. So, for example, we have a number of facilities that we've set up in terms of 13-3 facilities, which, of course, are um, allowed under the Federal Reserve Act, the Section 13-3 um, some of those are operational. Some of those are still being set up. Um, and in the announcement for the Main Street um, lending facilities, which is yet to come online, but it's being set up as we speak, right, we've said we're looking at the nonprofit sector to see if there's something more we could do there to support that part of the economy, because that's another part of, important part of the economy. So we're using our tools. Um, we've used some of the tools that we used in the last financial crisis. We've innovated and have other tools. Again, we're trying to help, right, really bridge over this period where there's a shutdown in economic activity so that we're helping households have um, credit. We're making sure that businesses of all sizes um, have credit flows, and we're making sure that municipalities have flow of credit to them. That's an important component of this. And then the fiscal policy makers have done a lot as well in terms of trying to get direct support to households and businesses and to the um, municipalities. So I think this is a multi-pronged uh, effort. Sizable actions have been taken, but at the Fed, we're always looking to see if there's more we can do with our tools to support the economy. And of course, well, once well, we get to the position of, of a recovery, then we'll, we'll continue to, to do more. Speaking of doing more, there's a lot of talk about negative rates. The uh, market has at times priced it in. Uh, Chair Powell was asked about that this morning, and he said, yeah, well, the committee doesn't support us, nothing we're looking at. And he added the words for now, which made those think it's coming, that maybe it is coming one of these days. Uh, what did the chair mean by for now in that context? And do you think uh, the Fed should have that as part of its toolkit and, and be prepared to use it now? So we looked at this twice um, as the FOMC, once during the financial crisis, and most recently as part of the uh, framework review that we're doing. We looked at tools, and if you go back and look at um, the October uh, minutes of the FOMC meeting, you'll see that look, the feeling there was that across all committee members, it's not something that we think of as being a tool that we would use. Um, you know, the Fed never says never, right? Circumstances could be different, but that's not a part of the active discussion. We have tools at our disposal in terms of including the, the quantitative easing or the asset purchases um, that we did during the last crisis and also uh, 
straightforward guidance um, that I think is effective. And those are our tools that are in our arsenal. They're the tools that were our go-to tools. You know, I think that there would be a lot of problems with using negative interest rates in the U.S. financial markets. I don't think it's something that I would certainly want to turn to. Um, and I was part of the all members of the FOMC who were expressing uh, sort of not really wanting to go there. But, you know, we'll have to see where the economy takes us. I don't like to ever rule anything out, um, but I think it hasn't worked necessarily as well or as badly as people thought before other countries started using it. So at this point, there's no active discussion about it, not something I support at this time. Um, and I think we still have the tools that have served us well in terms of asset purchases and forward guidance that would be in our toolkit. We've used them before. Um, I think we've learned by using them, and I think those are the tools that we go to. Pre President Mester, just as a mess, I know Tyler wants to ask a question. I just want to ask one very quickly here. Um, you talked about QE. Am I right in saying that you guys have not really done a classic QE program or a kind of QE program yet that you did in 08 or 09, which is a program designed specifically to reduce interest rates or, or ease credit conditions? In fact, what you've done is really liquidity-based QE in order to unstick the the the, uh, the the treasury markets and the mortgage markets that you still have essentially infinity QE in your arsenal, not really used in this crisis yet. So I agree with that interpretation. What we're doing now is we're making sure that the financial markets are functioning well, that credit can flow to businesses and households, and the purchases we've done, um, say, in the treasury market, which is was under extreme stress in February, were really meant to make sure that that market stayed functioning. We certainly wouldn't want to have a financial crisis on top of this global pandemic crisis. And so we've been in the markets trying to make sure that we're providing the backstop needed. And those asset purchases in terms of treasuries and agency mortgage-backed securities are really focused on financial markets. There will become a time when activity can pick up, when things reopen, um, where regions start, you know, allowing businesses to reopen and people get back, at, you know, active again, where I think we're going to need to really support that recovery. And that's when, right, our tools of forward guidance and longer term asset purchases will be important for getting us a recovery that takes us back to our dual mandate goals of maximum employment and price stability. So. Right. I think your interpretation is my interpretation. Those asset purchases we've done so far really were addressing the stresses um, in the financial system and trying to really get stability back there because we did not want to have a financial crisis on top of this pandemic crisis. That would have not been a very good outcome at all. President Mester, I'm going to ask a question that may be a little abstract or philosophical, and I probably won't phrase it exactly right, but I hope you'll get the sense of what I'm driving at. And, I, and what, what I'm wondering is, what is, what is reasonable for the American public to expect or for the investment community to expect is the objective of the Fed in taking the actions it's taking? Because the Fed, on, I think some people think that the Fed is serving as a replacement for the real economy on some level, and that, that all of the actions the Fed has taken and all of the stimulus that's been put in by the federal government is becoming, in effect, a stand-in for the real economy. So can you explain what the, what the objective is uh, in the context of that idea that all of this money is not and can't be a stand-in for the real economy? So we certainly are not trying to stand in for the real economy. But remember, the economy shut down as part of our battle against the pandemic. When, when you know, policymakers decided and the government decided that that was the best way to try to limit the spread of the disease and to buy time so that the healthcare system could gear itself up and be able to take care of the sick, this is what happened. And so that's why you saw that sharp, sharp decline in activity and in employment because it was shut down. Hey, when that happened, right, financial markets got disrupted. We're trying to build that bridge that get both the fiscal policymakers and the monetary policies are trying to build a bridge over this period of shutdown so that the economy can be in its best of a situation it can possibly be in given the circumstances when 
the economy opens back up again. So I don't think of this as being stimulating. I don't think of this as being replacing the economy. This is really to help those people in pain from this. And unfortunately, it's the most vulnerable people in society right now who are bearing the brunt of this investment in public health. So that when we get to the point where the economy can reopen, when you know there are uh, adequate healthcare facilities and testing and contact tracing so that people feel comfortable and safe going out about their business, we will be in a position to recover. This is a very deep, unprecedented situation. And so I think that I, I applaud the fiscal policymakers and I hopefully that people understand that what the Fed's trying to do is not crowd out private sector activity. It really is to build this bridge to get us to the point where when the economy reopens, the recovery can launch. Thank you. Yes, and uh, I'm just going to thank President Mester. Thank, thank you for joining us. I'm afraid we're out of time. There's only 100 more questions, but uh, we'll thank you for coming back <laughs> and seeing us again soon sometime. All right, Steve, thank you. Thank you all. Pleasure. And thank you, President Messer. You're exactly right, Steve. A hundred questions and so little time.